Stand here, my course, and welcome back to another episode of Rogue Tech. We did the campaigns of Ripper's Rumblers, and the last time we got to play with our brand new Thumper Artillery piece. The ROM has taken a little bit of damage and is currently not available, but it certainly left quite the impression. It's a very interesting piece of equipment, and if you can get continuous shots down, you can cause quite a bit of damage, and it kind of makes me wonder what happens if I start going up the artillery tree, because the Thumper is the smallest, as, or well, mortars are the smallest, but the Thumper is the smallest of the proper gun artillery, and then it moves up from there to snipers and then long toms and uh well if you are a fan of the saturday campaign that we run you know what the long tom can do but anyway today we're trying to work our way a little bit further through this planet it's trying to run out of missions that i kind of want to do it's a whole bunch of base assaults and uh co ambush convoys which are not exactly fun for me but you know what we're gonna knock our way through them we're gonna have a little bit of fun with them anyway we're gonna overcome that prejudice against such missions and to start things off with the b team Territorial claims. The pirate manufacturing facility on New Athens is an illegal intrusion into our territory and a cover for military personnel and units. Our efforts to resolve this through diplomatic channels have been rebuffed, and so now we're turning to a military solution. The facility must be destroyed. This is going to be a two and a half skull mission for four of 17 priority salvage destroy base 279,300 seabills. So let's drop down and hopefully annihilate everything. Now, honestly, bringing the thumper along on this mission probably would have been a good idea. We could have just like sat at maximum distance and started assaulting ground because the range on the thumper would have been rather hilariously huge. But no, we must actually get down here into the nitty and the gritty. Now, this is a bit of a problem because, of course, the base will be defended by turrets. Two and a half skulls, hopefully, is going to keep us away from the railgun turrets, but I make no promises. So we're going to just start getting on the move. We'll probably take a position up here so we can shoot down on them, see what we can actually see, and take care of all the things that might hurt us. The other solution, of course, might be to bring them along towards us. After all, it's a fairly short corner here. If we can drive the garrison over towards our position, that way we can hopefully avoid getting shot up by the garrison and the turrets at the same time, which would be ideal. So we'll keep everybody on the move and rolling. Let's see how the enemy intends to respond. Not at all. They decided they weren't quite interested in actually doing battle with anybody, and so I'm going to step up here. Yes, here. Hey, we get to see everything. So we're dealing with a Shadowhawk, of course, another flea, a standard turret chassis, a couple of reinforced buildings, more turrets, and yeah, just two turret chassis. That's not the worst thing in the world, if I'm completely honest. Where's that other standard turret chassis? No, let's bless down this one. The Shadowhawk is fairly decent at knocking out turrets, as long as they're not AMDs. Ooh, not... Well, I was about to say not quite as good as I'd been hoping, which, to be fair, it wasn't, but not terrible either. How much damage do we do? We do not have good enough sensor detail to actually figure that one out. We got Javelin coming in from the corner. We don't really care about him. But we will probably send Brother swinging off in that direction so he can come around. And, oh, he's right there. Interesting. Uh, in that case, turn on the mask, because we're within range. And we just need to wait for it to finish calculating the actual distance that it can travel so that we may travel on top of the target and annihilate it. 55% only? Jeez. I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe Brother is not meant to be a melee character. Because he missed that, and this is a snub-nosed PPC arm javelin, and he's got a buddy, which is a hunchback. Not great. Okay, gotta admit, uh, we may have made a little bit of an error over here. Still, that turret is the most important thing to kill right now. Yes, a snub-nosed PPC is kind of scary, but uh, not quite as scary as the Astrid. Oh, that was the angle I was looking for, actually, and I was about to click it, and then it took it away from me, so give me back that angle. Because it shows one of the turrets, but not the other, which makes it a safe maneuver. Uh, hi, I've also got an MRM-30. Oh yeah, did I also mention the ERPPC? It's a pretty decent backup if you're trying to bring enough firepower to the table to absolutely wipe somebody off the map. So the first of the uh, turret defenses is down. Do we know what kind of this is? No, it's still just random Shadowhawk and a flea. Flea's going to maneuver over to the side, not really get involved in the combat. I may as well send the Starhawk over here to go say hi to the Javelin and demonstrate, Hello, I have lots of energy weapons uh, when they can hit, which unfortunately has proven not to be most of right now. We only hit a couple of times with that, but hopefully that'll be enough to sort of keep them off their game, and of course it's a 5S Shadowhawk. It's exactly the same kind of Shadowhawk that we have. Two of them. And I'm really not interested in getting a third. I come for mech variety, and what do I get? Shadowhawks upon Shadowhawks upon Shadowhawks. A lot of fire coming our way, only a couple of the LRMs actually managed to hit, so lucky on us. Not quite sure which is the more dangerous target. Good sensor lock coming down, and I'm gonna guess you're a shredder turret, because... 
you fired a lot of times, and that could have hurt very badly. Lucky for us, it looked like most of the shots missed. However, now the he's getting bombarded from space, essentially, with LRMs. Luckily, those did nothing either. Although, those could, of course, be fast cap, in which case, we're about to take a lot of pain. Uh, we are going to shut off the mask. That way, we can sort of keep it under control. And in the meantime, we're going to zip on over here. 87% chance? Yeah, I can work with that. Hello. And there goes his leg, so we're starting to get a little bit of progress on there already. Should only take a little bit more effort to actually knock him down, and we'll be good. Well, knock him down, I mean take him out completely, because he's already on his back. Now I got a leg is a very effective way of removing a threat from the battlefield. Uh, I think we're gonna just keep the pressure on a little bit. Yeah, we could probably turn and start engaging more turrets to help out, but I think the MRM-60 that we currently have on those multiple mechs should be enough to deal with this. I was really hoping that you would knife through that leg, but apparently it was not to be. I need to get larger pinpoint weapons on that mech if I want to actually want to be able to pull that one off. T did not appear to work that time. The enemy is currently co contemplating their next move. After all, they have two more standard searches. You're actually fairly dangerous. Uh, the other one I'm not sure about. All right, hacker. It's time to sort of keep on your dirty work. Uh, we're going to maneuver off to the side a little bit. Not nearly as fast as I would like, but the goal here is to continue to knock out turrets. Which, you know, if you could do me a huge favor and just kill this one in one gigantic salvo, thank you. So now I can focus on the next of them. So I'm going to lob an ERPPC over at this guy, see if we can't take care of him in terms of what sort of damage he can deal, because the PPC will allow us to reduce his accuracy. Shadowhawk continues to bounce on forward, going to open fire on our little buddy. Managed to actually hit us with a tag, which is unfortunate, because now he's been marked, and will be an easy shot. Although he is starting to rack up evasion problems. I do not know what is wrong with me with needing to yawn so much today, but apparently I have to. Uh, Javelin rushing on for it. A little bit of a floating gun barrel over there, but that's not a problem. So we'll uh, continue to move our other mech in range. Although this could get ugly really, really fast. And the reason is because our accuracy out to a distance is way better than I thought it was. Ignore me, I'm clearly spouting nonsense. Open fire, please. And we hit him with the PPC, and we hit him with the tag, and we hit him with most of the MRMs. So hopefully that'll sort of take care of him being accurate or not. So lots more LRMs coming in. I'm not super worried about them, if I'm completely honest, but I am worried about whatever PPCs he can shoot. Luckily we have that sort of half under control. And lots of missing going down. Lovely. Okay, so we did actually manage to avoid all of it. The Hunchback, of course, is standing up. He will be very poorly very poorly accuracy. Now he will be very poor in his accuracy for this next round because he has been on his back. Ooh, Blanche actually hit us with something. 18 damage? Not quite sure what, but it did cause us to flinch a little bit. So a little bit of a fire has broken out, but that's okay. Where's that javelin? Way over there. So how fast have you been moving? Uh, I could probably get to him. How much danger do I view from him? Not a whole heck of a lot. But you, on the other hand, could be very dangerous. So mask two back on. We're going to go sprinting after him. We may need the supercharger for this one as well. Oh, we do. Okay, so let's go on and turn on the supercharger as well. So maximize the potential speed that this mech can actually travel at. See if it's finished calculating. It has concluded its calculations and has indicated that. Oh, very much yes. 61% chance, but that should be okay. Let's run all the way over here. Hi, I'd like to remove you from the fight, please, because you're kind of dangerous. Unfortunately, we missed again, so not tremendous, but we have a ton of evasion going for us, so there is that working on our in our favor. Uh, Majestic, I kind of want to fight other people, but I may not have much of a choice. Is that blue or green? Because it looks like I've got a back shot here. I do have a back shot here. What the heck? Unfortunately, I don't have shoot and scoot, so I'm going to have to sprint to actually get into range of protection here, which is the forest, and to do that, that kind of takes me pretty far out of range, actually. Ooh, what's the accuracy looking like over here? That's still pretty good. Hunchbacks are very poorly defended to the back, so let's just cut through and see if we can't cause him to reconsider staying in the mech by blowing off his left torso. Now, that's not exactly the torso that has all of the weapons into them, but it is an important torso nonetheless. So he is now stressed, as I imagined one might be if they were missing a leg and an arm. I was about to try and make some other thing because I knew arm and a leg was too easy, but that did not end up working out. A PPC snubbed and some machine gun bullets, but we're perfectly okay because we have more important things to kill, although we are in the middle of heat, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, you do not have shooting scoot, so I must stay on the move. Uh, is that actually covered? That is covered. Lovely. So we will continue. The mech is on fire. That is a 
handleable circumstance. There's all I really care about, and lob some MRM 30s his way. Because I think, yes, okay, lovely. So I've managed to take out three of the four turrets already. We haven't managed to really do much to the actual mechs themselves because we haven't killed a hunchback and this javelin apparently is immune to being shot at, but we have taken care of most of the really heavy problems. Uh, bullet Trap, you have a new target, I assume, yes? A Bullet Trap can, of course, shoot and scoot, and so he shall. Give me that turret right there. That's exactly the one I want. Open fire. And we hit him with the PPC, lovely, and a fairly decent number of the follow-ups from the MRMs. We're unfortunately probably going to have to walk through the fire, which our heat sinks had no trouble with at all. Lovely. Shadowhawk going to bounce down. He's going to get into combat with that Starhawk. Unfortunately, he was not able to actually connect with us, and you now have come within range of all of the melee that we could ever want. So I think Starhawk may just set him off balance, and then we'll bring in the Hatchet Man. Maybe not, though. Hunchback maneuvering as quickly as it can, which on one leg, not all that fast. Oh, you're setting fire to my cover. Now I'm going to abandon it. Wasn't a huge deal anyway. All right, brother. Where's your target? Do I still need all of the things on? Because I really don't want the supercharger and the mask to be on. If I tried to axe you from here, it'd be a 78% chance. If I tried to axe you from here, it'd be an 83 ticket. Please don't explode. Censored for your convenience. And there goes all of his weapons. Let's see if he explodes. He did not. Okay, lovely. So we're going to have to remember to shut that off, even though it's going to keep him sort of out of the fight. Bullet Trap has... Ooh, Bullet Trap actually does not have a shot, because I maneuvered him into a position where he can't actually see the turret properly. So I'm going to have to maneuver. Enemy well, ain't that a bunch. Uh, give me that turret, please, because it needs to die now. I can't afford to allow it to live any longer. PPC! Oh good, the PPC did most of the damage, and the MRM did the rest of it. Okay, so the turrets are all offline. We no longer have to worry about these turrets. Uh, the reinforcements are a bit unfortunate, but we have the enemy mostly contained back here with us, so I think we're going to be okay. Uh, I can set you off balance, but honestly, I think I just want to kill you, because it's too easy a thing not to do at this point. Uh, where is your back actually facing? <laughs> it's back here. I really got to wonder, was that a good idea on your part? Because... I don't think it was. We are on fire, which does cause a couple of problems, but nothing too serious. How much does he get? I'm not sure what that was, but it certainly was interesting. Uh, you have about 60 health here. Uh, shut off the X-Pulse. Keep the temperature under control. Blast. Mediums. Got him. Okay, I was a little bit worried that I got a little bit too cocky on that, but no. The medium pulse lasers were able to take care of it, so now it's me and you, buddy. Two Shadowhawk 5S's fi to see who will rule them all. Uh, but perhaps I could bring in a little bit of <laughs> support. Surprise! I have friends. Do you? Uh, apparently not anymore. Open fire! A blast down on him, starting to make him unsteady and no longer evasive, drilling through some of his armor. And he's gonna have a bit of a problem. Of course he gets to move now, unless that's the flea, in which I'm really hoping it's the flea. So I can come in and sort of take advantage of things, although we can't use the supercharger on the hatchet man anymore. Oh wait, he already went, so it's not even a concern. He's gonna bounce up here, he's gonna decide that was the most brilliant decision he possibly could have made to place him in between a Wolverine and another Shadowhawk. Gotta tell you, I don't think this was your most sound decision ever made. And it'll also give me time to sort of run brother into the fight. So the fleet maneuvering up as well. Opening fire with the machine guns and a couple of light weapons. We'll probably just pull back from this ledge and make it so he can't do anything to us at all. But yeah, you've just walked yourself into a location where two mechs with MRMs can basically get on top of you. And you thought that was a good idea. So let's go maneuver over here. Since we don't have to worry about the enemy anymore. Hi. Oh, that's an ERPPC and a whole bunch of shots. Also, the knockdown, because he weren't ready for this. So he's on his back, and uh, that is the first of his injuries going down. And I did not read how many injuries he has. Three or four. Okay. Uh, Majestic, would you like to get into this fight? Oh, you would. And you're pretty much already in position to shoot at him. Isn't that just beautiful? Large expulsed on. Take a target and kick over his head. I mean, if you shoot at it enough, eventually it will fall off. Eh, why not? We'll see what we can break down it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not super enamored by the idea of taking another Shadowhawk. We did get a head hit, lovely. Uh, brother, you cannot continue to sprint at these great speeds. They are beyond you, so Mask and Supercharger to off will make a sprint. And yes, it makes us slow, but you know what? We'll get there eventually, and that's alright. Because it's not like we need to desperately get into the battle anyway. 
Hacker, uh, you're going to maneuver into a position where you can basically shoot at him, but most of the people can't shoot at you. Actually, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, they're all turrets. Uh, you know what? That, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Make a target. Make that target his head and shoot. Because we have a lot of shots. Well, there goes the torso. He's dead. If you please don't blow up the CT, we'll get four parts out of that. Because he's got an XL engine. It's another Shadowhawk with it. Well, it's another medium mech at 55 tons with an XL engine. I don't know who thought that was the greatest idea, but apparently we're getting shot from the side. Okay, so a uh, pretty interesting rush of LRMs, but nothing too bad. We probably shouldn't have been standing still. And more missiles coming down on the Wolverine, getting his back as well. May have underestimated the enemy. Let's see exactly what it is we're getting involved with. 75% of the base... Oh, yeah, the flea. I was like, where's the rest of the garrison? It's right there. It's 20 tons. And it's got a couple of medium lasers and a lot of other things that I should not have stood still because that left arm is pretty badly dented at this one, which I'm not super happy about. What do we got over here? Griffin and... Hang on a sec. A Bushwhacker X2. Bushwhackers are nice mechs. Griffins are also interesting mechs. I mean, they're different. So there is that. All right, brother. Uh, brother's not going to have a target on anybody for quite some time, so we're going to just continue to sprint off into this direction because eventually we'll get him in range, and also I want to sort of cool down his mask because otherwise things can get ugly really quickly. All right, so it's showing me that I can get on top of this flea in short order, and so I'd like to do so from cover because that would make me just feel oh so very safe, and that'll also be fairly accurate too. Huh, interesting. Oh, we've also got you, which is the Grim Reaper. Okay, bit of a problem there. Uh, we'll have to take, well, not too much of a problem. The Grim Reaper, if I'm not mistaken, has an XL engine. So, hi, uh, I could target my buddies over here, but really, I just want to make sure that the entirety of the garrison goes down. Can you blame me? Wow. That, that was just... Yeah, you could say that. Okay, so we've managed to completely wipe out the entirety of the base garrison. The Griffin looks to be twin missile pods? Got more missiles coming in from on far, darting all over us, dealing a little bit of damage. Uh, the Grim Reaper, and what else is going to be over there, do you think? I'm not really sure. Can we see? Do we have the sensors for it? Because we are going to be moving away from it. Uh, no, that just is the Grim Reaper. That's what he does, and it's what he's doing. That's not a really a big deal, if I'm completely honest. So let's just maneuver down into the forest here. We're going to ignore Grim Reaper for a little while and get ourselves out of that terrain. Hi, Griffin, or... Yeah, definitely the Griffin. Please give me that Griffin back. Uh, yeah, 61%. ERPPC. Oh, he managed to hit it as well. So he's just having a bit of a bad day. Because now he's being targeted by Bullet Trap. Majestic will be maneuvering soon for position. And we'll just basically envelop them and they will not be able to stop us. Also, the more we move to engage them, the further away we come from the Grim Reaper. Which could be a good thing and a bad thing. I'm going to opt for a good thing for now because his... His LRMs haven't been incredibly dangerous, Jess. It's not like we've been being bombarded by a Madcap Mark III or anything. Wow, I didn't realize they made Griffins into Lambs. Yeah, clearly not, but still, that was really quite far. I'm rather impressed by that, because now you are probably not touchable, just in terms of how much defense you have going for you. Let's go find out. I don't care about the buildings. The Bushwhacker is at 61%, the Griffin is at severely less than that. So I guess we're shooting the Bushwhacker. Uh, getting a couple of hits on through and also a whole bunch of scatter shots as well. Was that a penetration? That looked almost like a penetration. Can't really tell. It's white letters and orangish reddish letters on a white background, which make things a little bit difficult. So kids, always remember the number one rule of graphic design. White text on a black background or black text on a white background can be read on any color. Sometimes games forget this. Ace Pilot is going to zip on away. He has an LRM5 Zeus and we've got a Wolverine. Okay, I was expecting something a little bit more, but apparently a single AC-5 like the normal Wolverine. Maybe not, but uh, that's what I'm going to guess at this moment. Let's get underway, and that'll give me a really nice shot anyway. Yes, yeah, so we're going to keep the pressure on. We're going to push them back. Managed to hit him with the sensor impairment, so he's now having a bit of a trouble. And he's also been targeted cryer. So as long as we can just keep the fire up before he gets to move, we might be able to kill him. And that would, of course, be ideal. X-Pulse is going to be at 99.1%, so keep the fire going down. I just need a little bit of a penetration on that right side. Because if I can penetrate his right side, what I can then do on top of that, blow out his XL engine, and that would kill him. And I don't think he's quite uh, planned for that. Well, maybe he has, but I can dream. Uh, I have side shots on everybody, and including him, but it's going to be an obstructed shot. Still, should be good enough. Hi, I think I've got you. 
Oh, yes. Yes, we did. Please don't kill too much of it, guys. We're trying to... Thank you. So, Bushwhackers like that Shadowhawk have XL engines, which is a really, really bad idea. And I cannot seem to convince people of this fact. Everybody tells me I'm crazy for not putting XL engines on anything larger than a light. But that's why. Because all we had to do was tear out part of the mech, and he was done. Whereas if they tear out part of one of my mechs, we will still keep fighting. I mean, we spread the weapons out all over the place, and we make sure that the engines are not XL'd, and that allows us to just continue to duel. Drastically increases the survivability of your mechs. In fact, the standard engine is, frankly, the most protected engine you can get, because it doesn't have any critical slots in any location except for the CT. Oh. So, still jumping around, shooting at our Wolverine. We're just going to turn around and basically blast him, because all we need are a couple of good hits to make him no longer evasive. More shots coming in from the Grim Reaper. He's not being terribly effective, but then again, also not terribly ineffective either. Back on us. Oh no, it's the Wolverine. That Wolverine 1R. I'm going to guess he's a pirate Wolverine with rocket launchers. Just going out on a limb on that one. All right, give me a reasonable shot here, please, somewhere. Somebody. Uh, that's not gonna happen. It doesn't look like that is unfortunate. Am I gonna have to... Well, actually, let's just find out. The obstructed shot will grant us really terrible accuracy, but if we sprinted to get... It is impossible for us to get an obstruct, unobstructed shot, isn't it? Ooh, that is unfortunate on several levels. Alright, then in that case, we'll just walk. We'll walk, we'll get the obstructed shot, we'll head towards the next position. Sooner or later, we are gonna get to you, and you're not gonna be able to stop that. Just need a couple of good hits, and by a couple of good hits, I mean a lot of good hits on this one. Probably should have opened up with the MRMs, but they weren't available at the moment, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hi! Uh, it's time to turn around and get back involved with you. We are going to heat up a little bit doing this, but I think I've got enough firepower, perhaps, to actually get through your defenses. I would have definitely if I hit the PPC, but there he has lost his evasion. Hacker is now up to truly give him a piece of our mind. Uh, so let's go knock him over. Probably. Well, yeah, it was the order they came up. Starks are exposed, and there goes his leg. I don't think he quite planned for that. <laughs> so he flew on over to the side, and now he's on his back. Yeah, I don't think he planned for that at all. Uh, I also don't think you're in range unless I turn on all of the high-speed sprinting technology. So let's go do that. Supercharger on, mask to on, let it calculate and refigure out just how fast this thing actually can be once we start really pushing everything to the limit and we'll refresh that. Please tell me I'm in range. I am not. How close am I to getting in range? That is the true question. Honestly, not all that close. Oh, actually, mm, two tiles, like two, three tiles and we would have been there. That's kind of painful, actually. All right, so let's then just run right here. Yes, it's a little bit of an unstable ground, but it allows us to move very quickly. And do we think this Griffin has an XL engine? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yeah. Uh, he's got about 100 health left. I've got a single ER. Uh, let's go find out if he's got an XL. I don't think we hit him at all. We got a jump jet, so we're working on that one. And the Griffin is currently in the middle of his own funeral pyre at this point. He's going to stand up, of course, and be able to move. He'll probably even be able to jump, which is going to make him a pain to hit. Hatchman getting shelled by rockets. Luckily, the Hatchman was traveling at insanely high speeds, and therefore much, much more difficult to hit than he gave us credit for. He was, of course, an ace pilot, and now the Griffin stands right back up and is getting ready for battle. Apparently, he's a shoulderless Griffin. By shoulderless, I mean he doesn't have any missile pods up there. Which, I'm pretty sure he was shooting missiles at us, wasn't he? Or did I just completely miss that? So fire all over the place, as it's wanted to be. And he is, of course, going to jump. And open fire on the Shadowhawk. Did he hit with that one? I'm not really sure. He did blast our left arm pretty severely. Alright, brother. Brother can get all the way over here. What's your chance of exploding? 10 and 15? Yeah, you're going to do this. Uh, and you're going to do this because you have the potential to do amazing things. So... Somebody exploded. There we go. Hello. There goes half your mech. And is it... That is the right side, so I believe... Yeah, we... Ooh, no, we didn't. We didn't blow off the rifle, so apparently he still has his ability to defend himself for however long that's going to last for him. How unstable are you? I mean, you just jumped with that. So, Hacker, if you don't mind, can we get a little bit of pressure on this guy? Oh, beautiful. Fire. We're starting to focus on his other side as well, so we have a chance of blowing off his other leg if we don't, you know, kill him. He is no longer evasive, which means now Bullet Trap gets a free shot on him. Bullet Trap doesn't have a shot, so I am going to have to move him, which is a bit unfortunate. So we'll slide slightly to the side. Hello, I have an ERPPC. 
And you now have exposed lots of things. And do you have an excellent? He does not. He actually is alive. He's going to be on his back. Although, I think that might kill him. Only two of four? Huh. I kind of would have figured more. Apparently not. Majestic. Go and wipe him out, please. Just off the face of the map, if you don't mind. Uh, go for the leg. You may as well. See if you can't preserve some of this. Try not to blow out the entire CT. He came close, but we managed to knock out both of his legs. So the B team doing fairly decent work. I'm going to have to shut off the XL engine. I mean, there's just... Or not the XL engine, but the supercharger. There's just no way we can keep it on at this point. It's too dangerous. So we're going to have to sort of chill down low. Although, once we kill this Wolverine, we're going to be in a fairly decent position. He's got a medium rifle yet, which can deal a fairly significant amount of damage. The Wolverine is running away to get some a little bit of distance and open fire on us. He hit our Wolverine quite effectively. So, clearly he ascribes to the belief that there can only be one. Uh, I agree. But the difference is... We're the one. So let's uh, maneuver around to his side. Uh, strike from here? Yeah, that'll give us a bit of protection. Hello? Oh, there goes your gun. Now what you got? Answer? Nothing. He's got nothing. Alright, let's uh, put a little bit more pressure on him so he understands quite entirely his situation. Hello. This is the Shadowhawk. This mech is also known as our drill because of an MRM-30. I think you're dead. I really do. I am wrong, but he is knocked down. Oh yes, very much on his back. So my suggestion to you, buddy, is to eject. No, no, he doesn't. He he thinks he's got this handled. I think he's wrong. I, I really do. I think that continuing to fight in this sort of situation, if you think that Grim Reaper is going to save you, you got another thing coming. Alright, uh, go. I could make him armless too. It's a Wolverine 1R. Do I really care? Answer? Not really. Just blow him apart. If he survives this, I'll be pretty shocked. Yeah, he did not. Also, he's a primitive mech. So that is completely dealt with. So now Bullet Trap can maneuver to go take on the final boss. And can I get a direct line of sight, actually? Oh, I can see him. Huh. I didn't realize that. Uh, this actually is a direct line of sight, isn't it? It's also not a terrible chance to hit. Not you, but you. Open fire. Hey, we hit him with the censored impaired, so he's going to have a little bit more difficulty with that. And he's been target acquired, and he got hit by a fairly decent number of MMRs. He's pulling back, he's attempting to do a little bit of long range. Ooh, wow. That is actually pretty dangerous. He hit us with a PPC. Although, what kind of PPC? I'm not really, really sure. What are you, my little friend? Are you a battle master? Yeah, you're a battle master. Like, you're not. But you you wear the skin of a battle master. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, go continuing to sprint around because we need to take some time to get, actually get to him. And nobody really cares if brother shoots at anybody along the path because he's not here to shoot people. Wait, you gave me a side shot with an ERPPC? You do realize it's a terrible, terrible plan, right? Wait, what was that? Target detector, okay. That makes a little bit of sense. I was like, wait a second, did I do something amazing? No, no we did not. So we just got to keep up the fire, and eventually we will break through him. And I think he knows that, because he's not having a very good day. i got to get you relatively close in order to do anything, but I'm not willing to step outside of cover for fear of a PPC. Maybe you are actually a battle master. It's just, I kind of figured that a battle master would be a little bit bigger. He decided he was not going to engage us on that round, which is a fascinating decision, which I can't help but think is a brilliant tactical maneuver that he should continue to attempt to do uh, as much as humanly possible. Confirmed. Or botedly possible. One miss. Two hits. Not the worst thing in the world. Alright, brother, continuing his quest trip. Trek. Ooh, where are you? Are you going? We're going to get out to you. No, seriously, how do I get up to you? I get the feeling that this has got to be it. We'll figure it out soon. By next turn, I think he should have his capability that he will be able to uh, turn on all of his assault systems and just leap on forward at a maximum speed charge in the most beautiful way possible. Hi, I have a lot of weapons, and you're the only target left. Do you mind giving up? Only done two damage. That's really terrible, actually. 
because he's bulwarked and defensive and he's maneuvering around. He's going to fire with a PPC and that, yeah, that's a full-on PPC. I was questioning that. I was like, is that a real one or are we talking a light PPC here? But no, he's, he's full-on. This may actually be a full battle master. In which case, wait a second, it's a assault mech on on a two and a half skull mission. Although we have fought Grim Reapers before, haven't we? I think we have. Keep the fire going down. Yeah, LRM-20, ERPPC, twin medium lasers. This this is most certainly the most classic of Battle Masters, except a raise named hero. Uh, we gotta just steadily get towards him, and eventually we will be on top of him, and he will not be able to stop us once that occurs. Structure exposed and an engine crit already, so that tells me his CT is open. Well, he's got an XL engine, which if he does, that's a really, really, really dumb thing to do on a, well, an assault mech. I don't dare stand still. That would be foolish and suicidal, and I'm neither of those things. So let's just maneuver a little bit closer, get a little bit of evasion going. You're an assault mech with an XL. How do you live with yourself? Oh, fire! See if you can't cause more damage. I want one of those so shoulders destroyed. Because if we destroy the shoulders, XL engines will grant you back basically half. Well, th uh, four mech parts. I mean, this this could... You know, as long as we don't kill the whole thing. Come on, just blow off one tor side torso and we're good. A fallover is not terrible either. If you can knock... There goes the knockdown. Okay, lovely. And blow off a side torso until it explodes. And uh, his hand... Ooh, weapon mount. Oh, that sucks. Can I get within range? How's our chances here? Yeah, we're at zero, 0 so let's go turn these suckers on. Let's see if we can't get the maximum amount of speed possible out of this mech. Oh, we can. You don't say. Hi. Hit his arm, hit his arm, hit his arm. What is with my melee pilots that when I give them an advantage, they core things out? You didn't have to do that. If you hadn't done that, we would have been able to steal the mech in its entirety. But no, they had to core out the assault mech. Jerks. I honestly did not think that would happen. I was fairly positive that what I was looking at would be a side hit, which would have been perfect because a side torso hit, specifically an arm hit, would have really helped out. Instead, we got that, which wiped out the enemy in its entirety, which we didn't need. Let's just blow this entire place apart because I am inconsolable about losing so much good salvage there. Oh, they're kind of just long range missiles for the purpose of that. That's adorable. Probably should have tried to like spread it out a little bit so that we didn't. Well, we could have been done just a little bit sooner. And majestic. Oh, wow. So for once, we actually have actually gone through pretty much our entire MRM complement. It only took us 15 phases of basically firing every single turn. That's pretty good. Alright, so let's go get picked up and head on out of here. A successful mission all around. N okay, not all around. We lost a lot of Battlemaster parts. And I could have sworn I've run to a Grim Reaper before, and I didn't think it was an assault mech. But apparently, I mean, it looked like a Battlemaster. It was acting like a Battlemaster. Maybe not. We'll have to sort of find out once we actually get to the salvage screen on this one. 331,815 Seabills is not terrible at all. The Shadowhawk picking up a whole ton of kills. This mech is just very, very solid. I'm very happy with it. The Wolverine, I think, is okay. It's a slightly different interpretation, but still fairly decent. Uh, we've got four Bushwhacker parts, a bunch of Griffin parts. The Grim Reaper is indeed a 55-ton mech. Okay. So it's a mech designed by Comstar, and we've already got one part for us. I'll, I'll just throw that in there just for the sake of having it. More Shadowhawk 5S parts. Yay! That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not. Uh, the Zeus is 20% jam chance, but mitigated by gunnery. Uh, increased damage, increased jam rate, long range missiles, fire cell, blah, blah, blah. So 5 damage per missile. 6 damage if you throw on a special array on that one. Um, machine gun arrays, angel ECMs, cooling pods, E cooling plus 2. Engine core 300. Do I got one? I have one, okay, so I don't really care. Uh, Artemis 4, I have a bunch of those. Ferrofibros, I think I've got like six. <laughs> I was right, perfect. Uh, double heats and kits, I have five, so we're good on that one. And TSM, I have one, but we're going to grab that weapon mount, because weapon mounts are great. Uh, ammo, plasma, plasma, and I have TSM, we don't really use it. I have two TSM. We don't use it because it requires a great deal of control, although we now know how to have that control. It has The secrets have been revealed to me of how to control your heat sinks exactly. And now that we know how to do that, well, we can basically annihilate everybody. Angel ECM is quite rare. 
kind of want to grab the Bushwhacker part, though. But both of them. Because Bushwhackers are great. Really tempted to grab three of them. I don't think any of these are going... Yeah, it's a prototype, it says. So I don't think it's going to stack with any other Bushwhacker. But having 55 ton Bushwhacker parts is always nice and fun. Or Griffin parts. Do I have a different type of Griffin? I think I have a few of them. I may even be close to another Griffin. You know what? For the sake of new and different, I'll grab the two Griffin parts. Of course, we're not grabbing the Hunchback or the Javelin. We don't really care about those. Shadowhawk, I don't want another Shadowhawk. Actually, what Griffin hard points are we looking at here? Uh, five energy, two missile. Oh, so it's like every other, gosh darn. Unfortunately, it's like every other one that we've got. You know what I'm going to grab? Three Bushwhacker parts. Maybe we get the fourth, and maybe we'll build another one. We did not get the fourth, we just have the three. Got a flea part. Uh, two griffin parts anyway, so congratulations on that. Javelin, Shadowhawk, and a Wolverine. LRM-10, one of the Zeus's, a Magna, which is an increased damage. A Plasma Cannon for... Apparently these things break the game, but uh, that will have to be seen at a later date. And another weapon mount is going to be lovely. I'm not sure what I want to do with it just yet. Although I, I could throw that weapon mount. I think I already have a previous version on the ERPPC for the Wolverine, but if it is a plus instead of a plus plus, that would be a significant increase in accuracy and recoil control, which, you know, an ERPPC could really use. Be able to control it quite nicely. Or I can save it up for, like, a rack or something. That would be fun. Just throwing racks on everything. Oh, I want it. I want it so bad. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a mech that I can currently do that with unless I want to completely rebuild the Bushwhacker. And I kind of don't. I'm pretty happy with it being a Silver Bullet Gauss mech because Silver Bullet Gausses are a lot of fun so I don't really want to change that up too much. War activity and stuff is happening from the front. We got a Riven 2 in! Oh, and it's an old Star League model. Nice. Uh, generated, but the old double heat sinks were up to it. Lovely. And we got a Wolverine 6R instead of the 1R. Wow, we came out like a bandit. Jeez, okay. Uh, 38,969. So it was a great plan to, instead of taking the bush record parts, or actually, no, we did take the bush record parts. We just got super lucky. Let's go check out a brand new mix. <laughs> there are two more 55 to Yang, I don't need to speak with you, but thank you for the thought, I suppose. Yeah, we picked up two brand new mechs, both of the 55 ton range. So basically... I'm putting you in storage, or scrapping you. I'm putting you in storage. I'm also putting the Centurion in storage. The ROM is going away. You have a ballistic slot, right? Yeah, the ROM is going away. Uh, as is the Uzil, I think, right? Uh, ooh, actually, maybe not. Because this guy can't actually replace the Uzil. Alright, let's go take a look to see what we actually managed to save on this one. I already see we've managed to save the life support systems. Which can't actually be damaged anyway. Uh, we have saved two jump jets. Great. So that's pretty terrible. Uh, let's go see what we managed to save with the Griffin, because it's a Starly Griffin, and that clearly makes it awesome. It's got the twin missile hunchbacks, which is really, really fun. Oh, maybe I could just turn it into a maximum MRM build. I don't know how I'd do that, but I wish I could. Um, Engine Core 275 was saved. So that's good. And a Royal Heatsink Kit is baked into it. Converts mix to use double heat sinks, minus 5% heat generated, 10 maximum heat, 10 overheat threshold, minus 6 heat per turn. Hit one, uh, then this, what happens when it gets damaged? So, ooh, cockpit SLDF, plus one injury, plus one initiative automatically, sensors SLDF, plus four. Pl this, oh, we got lucky here. Now, limited hard points to be sure. But this, this is amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm so very happy. Max that armor right now. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go see what sort of equipment and engines. Do I have a light engine? I do have a light engine. Well, this is exactly what I'd want to use it for because it's a 55-ton Griffin with amazing heat generation capabilities. Don't even need a double heat sink kit into it anyway. We've already got that handled. Uh, we do, of course, need our Clan Pharaoh and our Clan Endo. May as well take full advantage of that one. We'll throw a weapon mount on here for the two energy, of which probably one is going to be a fairly powerful PPC. Just as a guess. Uh, I'm throwing the defensive gyro on there temporarily as a thought. We're going to do a real quick, like, fast build on this one. Uh, I don't intend to actually hang around too much pirate targeting system. Uh, that'll sort of counteract the heat that we're currently getting. Um... Cockpit, plus 50, uh, it'll affect heat a little bit, but the accuracy increases just far too much to ignore. 
Uh, any other things that I need? I do have a sensor tracker, which I will overwrite on that one. I'll give it a sheathed beacon. We lose the... Oh, wait, no, that's a sensor. Tra that's a sensor? That you were a cockpit. Active probe, electric countermeasure. So it is a sensor. Okay, so sensor tracker is going on there. And we'll keep the SLDF cockpit because that's basically a better comm suite. Well, maybe not. Plus one initiative, plus one injury. Uh, it's an armored cowl minus the armor. But it weighs nothing, so there's that. All right, so we've got basically the frame of this mech build, and I do think I want a 275 rated engine. We're at 1919, so it does mean I got to trim a little bit if I want to be able to fit other things. It used to have heavy Pharaoh. Do I have heavy Pharaoh just to sort of give it its full capability? Uh, Pharaoh, NSS, Stealth. No, I do not. I will probably remove the standard Pharaoh or the Clan Pharaoh for standard Pharaoh. And in fact, I'll probably remove them both depending on what I need to fit in here. But weapons, missiles, because you are equipped for maximum missiles. Unfortunately, I don't have MRMs. We're a little bit light on them. They tend to be fairly rare, actually. And also, we used the last of our ammunition for the improved MRMs. So that makes things a little bit more difficult to make work. Could go with a full-on LRM-20, but they are heavy. Ten tons apiece. Wouldn't actually be able to get a whole heck of a lot out of that. Uh, I could go with four. That would be 12 tons. I could do that. So, we could go with four missiles. So, Valiant, 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 and I'll go with Urian Pluses. 20% chance versus minus one accuracy. 10% chance, so a little bit better. Now, I think I'll use the standard short range missiles. What sort of heat would this give us? Um, 70 for 61 is actually not terrible. I'm not making use of the weapon mount at all. And also, there's plenty of space on this thing. But, that's not terrible at all. Do you use double heat sinks? That's, that's the other real question here. Your e-cooling is at 1. And that's actually the max e-cooling I can already get. Could remove it for more weight. But, do you take double heat sinks? You don't? Uh, you do. So that's fine. So we could just go something like this, throw in also a tag. Uh, I thought you had three. Yeah, you do. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, throw in a tag, a uh, narc beacon, a tagger, and then, well, maybe not all of that, because that would be four, five, six tons, and I still need to fit in the ammunition. So yeah, probably not all that. Although it also is clear we don't need the clan endo and the clan pharaoh. So we'll throw on normal pharaoh and normal endo. Save ourselves some of that. And eight tons, we are going to want a fairly significant amount of ammunition. Also, if we've got any special ammo, we can use that. Ooh, um, plus two. But at the moment, Artemis doesn't give you any accuracy bonus at all, so that actually doesn't help me. Uh, because Artemis is kind of lackluster compared to a pirate fire control system. So we don't need that. Um, streak ammo, no, we don't need it. Do a quick check of the store. See if they're selling any sort of special SRM memo. Weapons, missiles, deltas. No, just standard SRM and LRM memo. So nothing special in that regard at all. So we need, how many per ton are we dealing with here? Uh, 100 shots and we're burning through, well, 6 times 4 is 24. So each one of these is 4 rounds and so we need 4 of them. That'll give us 12 rounds of shooting. I got four times remaining. Uh, I kind of just want to go pair clan east. I probably just want to use my two ER mediums. But that would probably be a bit of a waste. Because the other thing I want to do is I want to cram case on this to handle some of the weight problems. We don't need this gyro. Oh, I also wanted engines. Oh, I wanted big, big jump jets. Unfortunately... That would be difficult. Trying to cram in everything you could ever want into a single mech. And somehow you realize that it's going to be difficult to get enough of anything on board. So that would give us one ton remaining. Which isn't really enough for case. Even if I have enough case. Let's go find out if we have enough case for this. Uh, t -t 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 patchwork materials, JRX, LTSM, case 2, we do. That takes care of our problem, but we're a little bit overweight. We could get underweight. Uh, we've got a shed 
a little bit of weight here. That puts us... I forgot because Pharaoh. That puts us on weight right there. Not sure if I want to do this, but this is the current thought. This will be light, this will be fast, this will be maneuverable, and this will give it a lot of alpha just out of all these missiles. It does have some heat problems. Uh, we're looking at... Wait, no, it doesn't. Oh my god, it does not at all. Wow, I didn't realize that, but yeah, this thing does not have heat problems at all. It does have longevity problems, but I'm going to have to work on that later, because I really want to sort of take it apart, put it back together, and twist it in 9, 15,000 different ways. But we do, of course, want to get another mission down today, so let's go set that up. So we, of course, need the hatchman up a little bit higher, because I'm going to need it on the higher level mission that I'm currently planning on doing. Shadowhawk took a lot more damage than I otherwise would have wanted that, so we're going to have to burn time a little bit for the A-Team to be ready. The A-Team is not going to be ready for at least another two days, but... Uh, so the pirates... Oh, no, the Capella Confederation likes us a lot. Thank you. So we could ally with them if we were so inclined. I don't think that I am, if I'm completely honest. All right, so all the mechs have been finished and fixed, which is lovely. We have seven days until the end of the month. We're doing fairly decent on cash at the moment. Do a quick check of our mech wars in the barracks. And then we've got to take a higher level mission, because that's basically all that's left. On you, Commander. You're good. Waiting You're good. Uh, you are... Too close to the next one of these for me to waste on a gunnery point. Sorry, but it's true. Brother, however, has made his guts level, so which is lovely. Next time up, he'll get piloting for a little bit more melee accuracy, I assume. Uh, you are ever so... Oh, wow, you're like 700 experience. 750 experience away from getting Warlord. Shame to be you. Uh, you're still scaling up. You... I'm not going to waste that, I said. And witness he is good. All right, let's go grab a contract. Kind of hoping that we run into something really good. Destroy base, defend base, escort, ambush convoy, or destroy base. And then we get down into the low ones, capture base. Um, I don't want to do an ambush convoy. And escorts kind of are boring. Let's go anger Davian. A lot. So this ought to be interesting. Uh, there is a reason why I waited for my A-team and my best mechs. So let's just confirm our best mechs for a moment. The Wolverine, the Shadowhawk, and the Starhawk. Honestly, I'm not 100% sold on the Starhawk. I mean, it's good, but it splatters bl damage all over the place. I'm kind of thinking that it might be a better idea to bring the Bushwhacker. I mean, the Bushwhacker is much more concentrated in damage. Do quite a bit. I'll have to think of that. Uh, but Wolverine... Majestic in the... Not Majestic. Majestic, you're not coming on this one. It's Witness who goes in the Shadowhawk. Exodus who goes in the Starhawk. And everybody's favorite hammer. Is that what I want? I'm not sure. I'm just a little bit concerned about the Starhawk. The Starhawk has a lot of potential firepower. 229 damage is pretty massive. It's well, comparable to everything. Technically, the Wolverine is the lowest amount of overhead firepower, but he also is the only one with a big hole puncher in the terms of his ER PPC. And then the light PPCs would stack. Now, we're going to be burning down turrets, and we need that raw damage that will that it doesn't matter that it scatters or not. So, Hammer in the Hatchet Man, Ripper in the Wolverine, Witness in the Shadowhawk, and Exodus in the Starhawk. Yeah, let's go take on a four skull mission assault base. Because this can only go badly. But you know what? We may as well put the pressure on to find out what's going on. And, oh, bit of a mistake that I've made. I should have brought the thumper. Because then I could just bombard the base. And destroy it that way. Because we could just lay down enough fire to wipe out the base without even having to take a look at it. I mean, it would allow us to get an easy win, but for that we'd want to take it for cash instead of salvage. So with um, basically 12 minutes left in a normal episode, we're about to embark on a, the hardest mission that we've ever done. But you know what? I like you guys, and it's a Friday, so we might as well have some fun with it. So 305,100 sea bills, 5 of 21 priority salvage, 4 skulls. There is a minor Davian base in this region, and we'd like to see them... We'd like them to remind them that the Capellan Confederation is aware of their base and they should not become complacent. Destroying a handful of the facility's structures should send the proper message. The base is likely to be guarded. Destroy the units guarding it and there's a bonus in it for you. 
So let's see how badly this is gonna go. I have hope, I do. I also have great fear, but. Okay. So there is a garrison. The garrison will be augmented. We only have to destroy three base structures. Where's comes to, where's we bail? But then again, they're probably gonna have a long time. It's. Oh, hi. Kill it. I mean, if the turret's gonna be right out, did you miss the turret? Can't really tell. Witness. I hear you. Um. Oh, I forgot. Do you do turrets have first turn protection? Break it. Oh, watching those medium lasers just go everywhere except the target was very concerning. Okay, how about you? What's your chances? A little bit better. I mean, the ERPPC is much better. Okay, we hit him with the ERPPC and a whole bunch of follow-up missiles. I don't think we're going to break it. I mean, he's got to reliably hit it with a whole bunch of medium lasers, and he's not going to do that. Let's get him on up here. Let's warlord this. Let's make sure that this actually works, because if this turret gets to shoot back at us, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay. First of the turrets is gone, and there's generally only four turrets that we actually have to worry about, so there's that working for us, or perhaps against us. Okay, um, PPCs. Yep, that actually hit us, the Starhawk. Oh, but it's a mech. A Galahad, okay. And more incoming damage. Scattering all over the place. Please don't light a fire, because I'm kind of using this as cover for a little bit. I'm going to maneuver closer to you. You've got a missile carrier. I get the feeling we walked into a bit of an ambush. Not gonna lie. I'm concerned. <laughs> what is shooting at me now? Oh, a sniper artillery replacement. And lots of lasers. Did I mention lots of lasers? So the sniper's gotta die. That's a full-on heavy artillery. Oh, wow. Okay, so we see LRM Carrier Mark II. Uh, we see a heavy shredder turret, that's gotta die. We see a sniper artillery piece, that's gotta die. And the last of the turrets is an armored laser turret. Then we've also got a missile carrier and a Galahad. And that's not even all of it. What can I do for <laughs> oh you? god, what did we walk into? Why did I think this was a good idea? Uh, it doesn't matter if the sniper doesn't see me. It's an artillery turret, it can fire beyond visual range. I needed to kill that. I need you to kill that dead in one round of shooting if you don't mind. Oh, thank you. Okay. Ripper, I need you to do the same to the sniper artillery piece and I'll deal with that laser. Honestly, I don't really think I can count on you to do it. So I'm going to make sure that I bring support on this one. Fire everything. Oh, it hurt itself in its confusion. That's lovely. Okay, down to 43 health. We can take it. Uh, not including, of course, the structure, in which case it's more than that. Um, I will continue to run you in this direction so that you can eventually get on top of these mechs and beat the crap out of them. That Galahad... Honestly, I was expecting something a little bit more powerful. Um, that's not me inviting the Galahad to just annihilate me in one shot. PPC? Okay, PPC took it out. So we've got three of the four turrets down. Good. And the last one is a heavy laser turret. Which will be painful to deal with, but it's not a shredder turret which can handicap me in basically no effort at all. And the LRM carrier is maneuvering. We got the missile carrier on the roll, and it is just a swarm LRM carrier. Oh wow, what? Apparently we've sent wind power into orbit. Wow, that, that was actually kind of impressive. Alright, get on over here. Go take care of this guy. 80%. Triple LRMs, he's actually not all that dangerous for a missile carrier. But we did kill him, good. So the first of the enemies are downed. And that's 33% of the garrison. There's got to be reinforcements on the way. I refuse to believe otherwise. Um, Continue to maneuver away from the Galhead. There's that turret. And that... Oh, no. I only see it with the one. One, two, three. Hey, three good hits. Not bad. So we just did a grand total of... Can't do the math. Uh, 60 plus 24. Yeah, 84 damage. That's not terrible. It's only got like 300 health. Uh, do I swing into the Galahad now? 
I do not. And the reason why I don't is because I need to keep the pressure going on the turrets. Turrets have got to die. Because the turrets have a lot of firepower for their tonnage. And if I don't kill the turrets, they will be able to slowly work me down and beat the ever-loving crap out of me. So we're going to work down our turrets, make sure that they are offline soon. It's not going to happen this round, I don't think. No. We needed one more round of shooting. Because we didn't fully commit to it. So we'll probably have the Starhawk take that out. Galahad is arriving. PPC, two PPCs and a Gauss rifle. That's reminding me very much of my, ga of my, uh, whatchamacallit, my bushwhacker. But you have made a mistake, sir. You have revealed yourself to Hammer. And we're taking a ton of fire from that, so we're gonna probably swing, swing the Shadowhawk over here to take care of this. And that's the last of that. Okay, so we will kill him this turn. We'll kill him, maybe this turn? Sort of same with that. So witness, you, yeah, you're off in, over this direction. You're gonna go engage this guy. Hi, surprise. Um, Yeah, drill, baby, drill. Fairly decent drill, actually. Star Trek's bow. Got him. Barely, but we got him. Or did we not? Oh my god, we didn't. He's got like one health here. How did you do that? I don't know. I don't want to know. But you know what? Surprise, Sir Galahad. 80%. Make it happen. Oh, light PPC. ER PPC. No more light PPC. And a light gauss rifle. Oh, and a double heatsink kit. It looks like a Warhammer. Interesting. Um, You're going to... Shoot and scoot. I need two hits with it. Can I maneuver a new position to see both? I can. I'm going to do that. Hi. I'm going to take care of you. And you. Alright, let's see if we can make this work. Let's be cool. Let's be awesome in actually having this actually work out the way we hope it to. Open fire. One hit. Two hits. Okay, we got the turrets all down. So all the turrets have been taken care of. And apparently we flattened the entire base or something. And the garrison is now down. So the garrison is down. The turrets are down. Ripper, it's time to go introduce yourself to the base itself. Which has not apparently called on the universe to defend it. Huh, interesting. Uh, go target the one in back. Actually, you can do 60 plus uh, 4 times 3, 120 plus 16. I actually cannot kill that 200 health building in one salvo. That is unfortunate, but I will kill the far one. So the enemy structure is now under defense. I think we missed with the PPC, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any reinforcements, but I'm not going to chance anything just yet. Pop over here. Okay, show me the 200 health building. Yeah, we should have no trouble flattening it entirely. Really? Okay, um... Hammer? <laughs> you wanna just go... Flatten that 200 health building for me? Thank you. Thank you, I really needed that. I was suddenly very concerned with just what sort of damage we could really do around here. Uh, let's zip on in here. There should be a 100 health building around here that I deliberately left for him. Oh, no, there isn't. Okay, uh, kill the weak one. Lovely. Mostly taken down. And now we can move on to the last 150 health building, where Ripper will break everything. Hi. Um, bye. Yeah, this time I think we got it. Good. So that is all three targets destroyed, that is all of the units destroyed, and those turrets really could have ripped us a brand new one, and wow, we actually are going to finish this episode pretty much on time, despite the fact that we took that mission so late. So, I'm rather impressed. We ran into three defensive units, two of which were vehicles. Although, that does mean I'm going to grab every single Galahad part. Because there should be four of them there. I don't think I have a Galahad. So, uh, not going to be able to get a mech on this one. But we picked up two 55-tonners already. Oh, really? Oh, uh, you must have cored out the CT. Uh, ERPPC? I have one already. What else do you got? Uh, Exchanger. Thank you. Come back here with my Exchanger. It's my brand new exchanger. I have none of them, so it's very important. Indirect fires, Guardian UCM, PPC capacitor. I think I have one of them. Uh, light Gauss ammo. Uh, 16 shots. How much does a light Gauss weigh? Does 50 damage, and it weighs 12 tons. 
which means that it weighs more tonnage than your average AC-10. Well, actually, no, it weighs the same as the AC-10, but more than the uh, LBX-10, which is a fantastic auto cannon, by the way, because the LBXs are 11 tons compared to 12, and it does less damage. Is there a reason I would ever want a light Gauss rifle? Is there a special kind of ammo here? Because it just seems all in all like a terrible idea instead of a normal auto cannon. Tons of Artemis ammo, courtesy of our one friend. I could grab double, double aller ammo. Yeah, we'll think about that. I'm not convinced on it yet. An ERPPC could be useful. I mean, if I can collect enough, I can make an awesome, which would be pretty cool. I deliberately avoided from saying it would be pretty awesome, so I deserve something for that. Uh, yeah, so we did completely break it off, and apparently the Galahads have a small cockpit, which is, in my opinion, a very terrible idea. But hey, that's what you're gonna do. I'm not gonna take that. I can't, I can't justify that to me. I can't justify this. I don't know how I'm gonna justify it, but I can. C3i. I just never bring C3i's, that's the problem. They're too heavy for a bonus that I'm not really sure is worth it. 5% increased range to sight, but it is lance wide, which is pretty cool. Nah, it's two and a half tons though. That makes it really difficult to sell. Up until the point where they finally get the C3 systems to work as intended, I think I'll probably not bother with them all that much. PPC capacitor might not be a terrible idea. I've already got one, but having more than one is not a terrible thing. But then again, I do need light gas ammo. But I don't want... No, I gotta, I gotta make sure that it works, just in case. Locked that in. So we picked up... A whole ton of LRM-20s, more than you can shake a stick at. An internal combustion engine, an Artemis targeting system, an indirect targeting system, a PPC capacitor, which we already asked for, an extra ton of those, and a ton of LRM double, as well as three tons of Artemis and incendiary LRM ammo. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that, that was not exactly the greatest pickup that I had been hoping for. It kind of felt a little hollow. So... Yeah, there was that. Successful mission, and it is a four-skull mission, which is pretty cool, the fact that we managed to pull it off, but I was kind of expecting more. I'm not complaining, or at least I shouldn't be complaining, because, you know, we won, and at the end of the day, that's a really cool thing, the, managed, the fact that we managed to take a four-skull mission with our lance, and we cleaned up pretty good. I'm actually really happy about that. But one of the things we're kind of looking for is we want to expand the lance we start need to start finding heavy mechs so that we can mount enough firepower to break things even more. Although we're doing pretty well in the medium cavalry range. Like, we really are. It's a whole bunch of 55-ton mechs. They're fantastic cavalry mechs. So 16,000 for the next four days is all of the repairs are going to be required on this one. So not terrible at all. Yeah, we are good. We're cruising. And that's also a fairly decent amount of experience on everybody. The hatchet man took, yeah, it's going to be three, uh, two days in total to fix everything. That's the shadow and the starhawk. And one day for the hatchet man. So that'll be ready to rock and or roll very shortly. In fact, we'll, we should have enough mechs, I believe, to just immediately turn around and send the B team away on something. So yeah, that's probably what we'll do. I mean, we're going to have uh, you, 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 and you most likely. So the, the Wolverine, the Uziel, the Bushwhacker, and the Commando. The ROM's missing something. Might be the power targeting computer that the ROM is missing, but the Thumper artillery kind of needs a little bit more support. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tarak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I one of these videos, press that little bell icon. Leave a comment and I will see you all in the next episode.